the last time we spoke was about six months ago. So it's, it's a really a good uh, midpoint touch base here. A lot has happened. And I just want to catch up with you, but I wanted to start with probably the biggest news this week of Tesla taking a big scoop of Bitcoin. It's very interesting following in the footsteps of Michael Saylor uh, behind MicroStrategy. I guess my question to you is, Jim, what do you think of this uh, revolution or evolution, as some people call it, of executives looking to Bitcoin? I mean, do you think we could see other companies like Apple, uh, Netflix turning to, to Bitcoin? The more people who join in, the, the bigger the price is going to be, the higher the price is going to be. It's a very simple equation. Uh, how it's all going to end, I, I have a different view, but in the meantime, I'm not going to rain on their parade. I'm not even at the parade. So more power to them as long as they get out in time. As you know, people love comparing Bitcoin to gold and many people view Bitcoin as uh, a great vehicle for wealth preservation, uh, more so than gold. How do you see it, uh, Jim? My view, as, as I think you remember, is that if Bitcoin becomes successful as money, which the advocates say, then the government's gonna outlaw it because they don't wanna lose the monopoly. They don't want the competition. They, don't, they want the control. Money is going to be on the computer, Dan. It already is in China. You can't take a taxi in China with money, with renminbi, with any, you can't buy, try to buy an ice cream with Chinese money. So it's already happening in many countries. China is certainly ahead of the U.S. But every, the U.S. is studying, figuring out what to do with computer, how to do computer money. All money is going to be on the computer, but I would suspect it's going to be government money. They don't want to lose control. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we saw even the IMF alluding to a new Bretton Woods moment, but not one backed by gold. Um, you know, they're speaking of a digital currency. And as you say, we already see China testing out a digital yuan, the euro expected to roll out a digital euro. Um, so, uh, you know, it is a form of government control, right? Because they'll know more about how we're spending the money, where we're going. Um, and, you know, they love it. First of all, they don't have to print it. Cost, money costs a lot of money. You have to transport it, print it, guard it, uh, account for it. If it's all on the computer, it's very, very simple. And they control, they know, Daniela, they know everything you do. And Your thoughts on the Reddit craze. What did you make of the way the people are positioning it? Is this David versus Goliath situation that has happened of the, the people taking down Wall Street and exposing the ugly underbelly of Wall Street? What did you make of it? Well, all of that's a little bit absurd. I mean, selling short is not the under ugly underbelly of anything. It's been around for hundreds of years. It's a highly respected and necessary part of the financial markets to have liquidity and to have credibility. So, uh, you know, the people, Daniel, you know as well as I do, everybody needs to sell newspapers. Everybody needs to get eyeballs. And so they, they write good stories. Uh, I'm not sure it was... It was a mob more than uh, the little man uh, taking down some some evil plutocrat. It was a mob that got together and the, the, the hedge funds, I'm still surprised that they sold so much short. I mean, I've seen short squeezes all my life and everybody, always the first thing I look at is how many shorts are there? Because then, then I, if, I, if there are too many shorts, I'm not gonna sell something short because I know I'm liable to a squeeze. And I, I still, I'm, I, I don't know them, so I don't know. I don't know how they made such a, a, got into such a position. But then smart guys said, let's do a short squeeze. They've been short squeezes for hundreds of years. And they did it. And they were successful for a while. Now the government is looking at it. The government doesn't have to get in, Daniela. It's self-regulating. Enough people have lost money by now that you don't have to worry about new controls, new regulations, it'll take care of itself. I find that really interesting. It's a new perspective I'm hearing, Jim, because you're right, the media did depict it like, you know, the, the small guys versus the ugly hedge fund monsters. Um, and it's interesting to hear you say that what hedge funds are doing is just normal part of the game. It's been there for history. It's not something like people are calling it manipulation, what the hedge funds were doing. Wait, selling short is manipulation? Since when? It's a manipulate, 
Daniela manipulated us with a mob. The mob said, let's squeeze, let's have a short squeeze. That's manipulation. It's pretty clear and simple. It's legal. They didn't do anything that I know of. They didn't do anything illegal. Uh, but the, but the manipulation where the guys having the short squeeze, all getting it on the internet and saying, buy it, buy it, buy it. I mean, the hedge fund guys are clearly smart, except for the fact that they overextended themselves. I mean, this company, from what I can see, was a dead company. I mean, the fact that the stock went to $300 for a company which is basically out of business because of some people got together and manipulated the stock and squeezed it. Why does that, why does that make the hedge funds evil? The hedge fund guys were smart and did their homework and knew what they were doing, except they got overextended, of course. The mob, I mean, the mob is going to lose a lot of money in this because that company's not worth $50, much less $300. It right. was it was eight dollars before. It's going to go back and probably lower. Yep, absolutely, Jim. You know we always love getting advice from you. Uh, last time we spoke, you liked Indian tourism, agriculture. Of course, you like gold. Um, has anything changed for you, or, or new sectors of opportunity that have opened up here for you? Well, silver is better. Uh, silver is still cheaper. I mean, I own both. I've, I've, I own both, and I will be buying more of both. But not now. I'm waiting for the correction, if there's a correction. Uh, but I will buy silver, and I'll buy more silver. Silver still silver's down 45% from its all-time high, Danielle. Gold is near its all-time high. Stocks in many countries are near their all-time high. There's a lot of talk of, you know, triple-digit silver, $100 silver, especially with initiatives like the Green New Deal. Do you see that scenario playing out, Jim? Well, I do know, do know that the world is moving more and more towards electric cars, whether we like it or not. Uh, and electric cars use, for instance, five times as much copper as they use uh, in, in a regular car. So there's going to be more demand and silver, of course, you, is, is used a lot in uh, the new applications. Solar energy uses silver. So I, I'm optimistic about many commodities going forward. Uh, I'm still buying agriculture. I, I see the cheapest area of the, of the cheapest asset class in the world. I mean, bonds are in a bubble. Property in many cities is, is in a bubble. Stocks are near all time highs. So I, commodities are still the cheapest asset class I know. And I know one good rule of thumb you taught me, Jim, uh, personally, many, many years ago is you like to buy gold under a thousand, under 900, preferably. Um, what would be the mark for silver then? Under what price? Well, yes, I, I certainly would like to buy silver under 10. But Danielle, I, I don't think that's going to happen in my lifetime uh, again. No, I, I don't have a, a price for gold or silver right now. I let the market usually tell me what to do. Uh, I, when I like despair, when I see despair of people giving up on something, then I will probably buy more silver, more gold. But there's certainly not despair in either of those markets right now. You mentioned the stock market bubble. This is something we've obviously spoken about in the past, Jim, and how you prepare for it. I had one guest on this week saying we could see it as early as April. Um, see, and see, see the bubble pop? Yes. Yeah, we can. That's, that's not a bad observation at all. I mean, I have no idea. Again, I try to play it as I, as I go along. I'm still buying shares in some country, not in the U.S. So you can see the bubble forming. I mean, Danielle, I've been to this movie before. This is not my first rodeo. I, I know how it, it's where you see new players come in. The whole thing with Bitcoin is another sign of that. Oh, the short squeeze we just had. Massive numbers of new people coming into markets. It's all happened before. It all plays out more or less the same way in the end. And in the end, of course, it pops and a lot of people lose a lot of money. What, what kind of correction could you see? 40%, 50%, 30%? What time? Oh, no, this time, uh, Daniela, in 2008, we had a serious economic pro financial problem in the markets because of too much debt. Daniela, since 2008, the debt has gone up huge amounts everywhere, all over the world. The debt is the highest in recorded history. The next bear market is going to be the worst in my lifetime and the worst in your lifetime. 50s, 60s. I mean, some stocks will go down 80 or 90 percent. It always happens. I mean, it's not some kind of doomsday. It's just the way these things work. It's just like telling you that this is a bubble, a classic bubble developing. Same that's happened many times. Go back and read about it. And they always end the same way. I mean, we're not making new, new, we're making new history, but we're not inventing the wheel here. We're not inventing bubbles. And we're not inventing pops. They've always popped. This guest that 
alluded to a huge April correction, 40% April correction, said uh, there's no place to hide, not even gold, not Bitcoin, not gold. Uh, the only thing he sees safe is cash and 30-year uh, bonds, 30-year uh, treasury bonds. Um, what's safe for you? I, I never use the word safe in the investment world. I've been around no, long sure. enough. Some, some, <laughs> some place to hide. Uh, okay, <laughs> something maybe less dangerous or more safe than others. <laughs> well, the only place to hide, of course, is is selling short if you know what you're doing, or cash. Um, but you have to have the right cash. You know, in two thousand seven and eight, a lot of people saw problems coming, and and they went into cash. A lot of them went into Icelandic krona, <laughs> and Iceland went broke. You know, so they, like it lost a huge amount of money going into cash. You got to get the right cash too. U.S. dollars. If you if you if you're going to ask me which cash, I would say U.S. dollar for the next the next turmoil. Jim, uh, finally, I want to get your thoughts on this uh, Fed game of chess we're almost seeing play out. Janet Yellen, as we know, former Fed head, now Treasury Secretary Mario Draghi, formerly of the ECB, now the Italian PM. Um, do you do you think this is an interesting move of these Fed heads? becoming more and more vocal and now in the government? Not good for you and me. It's not good for our kids. I, I assure you of that. Uh, there's this, uh, they all work together. They all know each other. They all think the same way. You now have the Secretary of the Treasury in the U.S. who was a former head of the Central Bank. I mean, this is all absurd. And they all believe in printing money and they all believe in borrowing money. And they all believe in spending money. Uh, I don't like it. I'm not of, of that sort, but I'm not the Treasury Secretary. Fortunately, fortunately for me and probably for them too. Jim, uh, finally, let's wrap with, you know, given the current um, financial and political environment, uh, just three tips you would give all our investors and listeners watching. Well, I would say watch Stansbury Investments. That's all you need to do. Watch That's Stansbury. It. Tune into Daniela's show here at Stansbury Investor. Yeah. Yes, watch, watch Daniela. You get all the answers. I mean, if I were... I, I told you I will probably be buying some more. I will be buying some more commodities. Maybe when we get off this show, um, I will certainly do that. Uh, I will probably buy more uh, Russian Russian stocks uh, probably today. Um, and I guess I might. I'm not going to buy more Japanese ETFs. But you know, the head of the central bank in Japan buys Japanese ETFs every day. I own Japanese ETFs because he's got a lot more money than I do, Daniela. Um, and the Japanese stock market is still down 30 or 40 per 30 percent from its all time high. I would suspect the Japanese stock market might make a new high, a go back to its old highs, which was in 1990. You weren't even born when the Japanese stock market made its previous high. And it, it may well go back to that. So I would and America's near its all time high. So I would prefer to buy Japan than the U.S. at this point.